by bling you know that's something that i'm sure a lot of people would be excited about um it's coming soon yeah obviously whatever you can talk about let's go into a little bit more detail about part two yeah i mean we uh finished film filming part two at the beginning of the year um and it's going to be released i think sometime end of october or beginning of november in terms of like the dubai bling series right obviously it's very controversial mm. and it's reality is it <laughs> i mean it, it can be like you know some of it um and you know some people they they love the entertainment side of it yeah but you know how real is it welcome to another episode of season five of recipe to success today i'm delighted to welcome a dear friend of mine marwan or as most of you will know dj bliss the superstar of dubai now you know he's featured in uh, dubai bling and he's got so many amazing things to talk about some of you may have seen the part one if you haven't go back and watch that and now obviously today's episode we've talked about you know all the exciting things that he's had since then so i can't wait for you all to check this out make sure you subscribe like comment all of that good stuff and let's get straight into it Marwan, DJ Bliss, how are you, bro? Good, bro. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me back. Thank you for coming, man. You're a superstar now. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> I appreciate it for real. So um, obviously, for those that haven't seen part one, I've you know told them, go back and watch it. Because you know one thing that I really love is that that was pre-Dubai Bling. And yeah. you know we talked about all the things that you had going on at that time. And then obviously, Dubai Bling happened. Mm. You became an international superstar, even more overnight. Um, in the UK, by the way, went crazy. It was number one, like Netflix series. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for me, it was like, you know, that's someone I know, like he's such a humble guy and Thank you, um, got nothing but love and respect for you. But how you been, man? Been good, man. I can't complain. Like, uh, like you said, like, you know, that show really like uh, changed my life uh, further. You know, I've, uh, I've always uh, been in like the spotlight with my DJing, with my TV career, my radio career, or hosting or music or whatnot. So this was like a whole new experience. And I was a little reluctant at first, you know, I wasn't sure like this is something I, I wanna do, but in hindsight, like, uh, you know, looking back, it was a great decision. Like you said, like people around the world, I get mess messages from like people all over the world who've watched the show. So it's like the masses, like something you could never imagine. So it's, it's amazing. I'm humbled and grateful for it. How did it come about? Because you were already, um, you know, super big in Dubai, especially in the DJ world. You know, you were very well known. Where did where did it be begin? Because obviously, you know, they selected a very small cast. Yeah. Um, and they obviously chose yourself. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that was part of the reason. They were looking for, you know, people who live in Dubai. And, you know, I was the first Emirati on the show that they picked out as well. So they were looking for an Emirati person. And I think, uh, you know, when they're looking for a reality show, that's gonna be a little bit more open-minded. They found this local guy, open-minded, he's a DJ. Uh, you know, it's a little controversial. So that was part of the storyline, you know, uh, the story of how I got to where I was and what I was gonna do next. Um, and that's where I think that that's what caught their eye. Uh, and then, you know, when we got involved in the show, we started talking about like, our, you know, storyline and like, you know, what I wanna talk about and, you know, um, a, a big part of it is sort of my music career and what I'm doing next. And, you know, on, on, on season one, we do uh, this song with Shaggy. We shoot the music video for it. So kind of show you. Like, Love that song, by the thank way. Thank you, man. Amazing thank hit. You. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and also like taking another direction, like with my music, trying to influence, you know, get more Arabic influence in there. Because, you know, as a DJ or as an artist, like from here, like if we continue to make music like what everyone else is making, like you don't really see the difference, right? Your unique sound. So this was the first time I have a song. It's called Hello Wallah. There's Arabic. The rapper on there is rapping in Arabic. The song is called uh, Hello Wallah. It's an Arabic phrase. Um, so, you know, just started that uh, journey into that new direction as well. And also, you know, you, you shared a part of your, your personal life, you know, your family being in there. How was that? Yeah, I mean, that was a big part of it too. That was another thing, like really, I, you know, thought long and hard about, you know, my wife came on uh, as a plus one, like, you know, as my wife on the show, and then she established her own character and she became like a main cast on the next season uh, because of, you know, the, the big scene that happened on, see, I'd, I'd probably say it's probably the biggest scene on uh, uh, episode one. So, that happened. And then there was a story about, you know, um, about our kids as well, whether we want to involve them or not. You know, as a parent, you always think about whether you want to get your kids involved and, you know, this world that we live in on social media. 
But uh, so, you know, we, you kind of see them on uh, season one and, you know, on season two, when we, we spoke about it, we said that, look, this is our life. So it's not too much, but yet again, we have to show, you know, that's, it's real, it's reality, and that's what it is. Mm. And, you know, obviously the show itself, did you, did you kind of expect it to be such a hit or did you kind of just do it thinking, you know, let's just show Dubai how it is? I mean, look, honestly, I, I knew this was going to, like, anything that goes on Netflix is big, right? We all watch Netflix. So, you know, I had a feeling, but I didn't think it was going to be this big. You know, number one show in all the Arab world, like you said, number one in the UK, South Africa, Australia, and number three, like, they call it non-English because we speak dual languages on there. So it's Arabic and English. So it's number three show non-English in the world. Wow. So did I expect it to get to those places, like number one? Like not at all. Like I remember somebody posted something. It was like just a list of countries, number one, number one. And I was like, whoa. Um, and I don't know, you know, on the net Netflix, like the cover changes all the time. So mm -hmm. sometimes it would be me. Sometimes it would be like some of the other cast members. So when I would see that and like it's a number one show, that, that was crazy for me. What I was going to say was in terms of like the Dubai Bling series, right? Obviously, it's very controversial. Mm. And it's reality. Is it? <laughs> I mean, it, it can be like, you know, some of it. Um, and, you know, some people, they they love the entertainment side of it. Yeah. But, you know, how real is it? I mean, it's pretty real. Um, I know the question people always ask me is, you know, is it scripted? Um, it's reality. It's reality TV, you know. Obviously, we they don't just say, hey, just go do whatever you want. Uh, and, you know, we're just going to film you. They tell us where to go, who we're meeting, and what we're going to do. But the rest is up to you. It's our personality. We sit down in a room, have conversations for, like, you know, uh, an hour, two hours. You, you know, the, the scene with my music video launch party on the boat was, like, a six-hour uh, shoot. So we sit there and, you know... Uh, a lot of talking happens, a lot of egos, a lot of personalities are in the same room at the same time. So a lot of things happen. <laughs> and for, you know, some people, they may have watched Dubai Bling and, you know, they may have thought you're, you became a superstar overnight, but a lot of people don't know that you've been in this world doing DJing, you know, working hard, building your businesses for a very long time. So whilst obviously the get, you know uh, the viewers can go back to part 1 and watch it but why don't you go, go into a bit of detail like you know your history yeah i mean i'm appreciative of it i know there's some people like they only know me from this show um and um uh, and then there's some people who you know know about the struggle um a small community here in dubai or even around the world but not as big as the the people who've watched it and I, I, I say, like, I'm grateful for it, you know? So, uh, I did a I did an interview with someone. They said, like, someone said, oh, DJ was, oh, he's a guy from Netflix. And I got a little upset because you, all the work that you have done. And I say, no, it's not nothing really to get upset about. I mean, it's, it's totally fine with me. I mean, the goal is to sort of reach the masses. So this was another key to the puzzle, you know, or a piece to the to the puzzle that I'm trying to build. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've put in my grind. I think, you know, the grind that I've put in got me to the point where the production team found me. Um, so, you know, there's that, obviously. There's some people on the show who, you know, got picked up just, by, you know, by what they're doing right now or what their personality is like. But I, I believe for me, like, they, they saw that for sure. And I think it played a huge role in being selected. I mean, the only Emirati on on the show, I think the first first ever in the history of Netflix or reality TV. And, you know, shout out to uh, my, my friend, Sara Medani, who's on uh, The Real Housewives. I think she was also another, like, first Emirati female on the show. So, yeah, that would be the first one that ever did it. And my wife also, you know, being Emirati as well. So it's I think it's a, it's a huge milestone. And uh, like I said, I'm just super grateful for it. It's another opportunity. Um, and... You know, in, in this industry that we work in, the goal is to sort of build your tribe and, you know, reach the masses, especially for me, like for my music and for my touring and DJing, like that's that's my ultimate goal. And to go out and wave the flag for the UAE as an artist from here. And this is just something that just, you know, it's a catalyst for, for achieving those things. Mm. And how did life change for you after the show? I mean... Apart life, from the hundreds of thousands of followers. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, that that's definitely one. Um, I mean, life definitely changed, you know. Uh, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I was kind of used to it because I've been in this before, like sort of in and out, you know. So I was had a, I had a super successful radio career before I left, and I started doing TV. So I was, you know, I had a TV career as well. 
Um, and I used to do like vlogs for a little while too. So everything had its like, you know, sort of like moments where you go up and then sort of everyone's, uh, you know, aware of you, especially radio here in the UAE. You know, a lot of people listen to radio uh, Well, at the time when I was on were listening. So, you know, they knew the voice and then it was a social media era. So they kind of knew the face. But this is like, boom, on your TV, you're, you know, you see what I look like and, and, and you get spotted. But I'll tell you one thing that's funny because I I all most of the time I'm wearing a hat and sunglasses on on the show. If I'm not wearing it, like the people might not recognize me. So every now and then, like I'll just take off my glasses, take off my hat, and like people are like no idea. As soon as I put it on, especially my round hat, the round hat and the sig, I yes, guess like yes, my yes, signature. Yes, 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 the signature look. So uh, so yeah, I mean, if I'm wearing that and I'm out at the mall or you know on a flight around the world too, that's the crazy thing. So. As soon as uh, season one came out, I think about two weeks later, I traveled to New York to run the New York Marathon. And my wife, Anne Ibrahim, came with me too. For like, They came to support me and we just came to hang out. We were going to LA afterwards. The, and the second day we landed, we were walking in the streets and people would come up to us like, oh my God, you're the, you're the guys from the no show. No way. And I was like, this is like crazy. Like we're in New York and people are recognizing us. Uh, and it's like two weeks after the show came out. And so many people would tell us how they related to the show. You know, it was like some of them were Arabs, non-Arabs or whatever, but- uh, I feel like there hasn't been anything like this before. Well, I think that's the key to the success of the show, right? Because everything, especially as an Arab in the Arab community, most of the stuff that, that you watch or are used to is like, documentaries or serials or movies or music videos and they're very like that stuff is super scripted right so people are used to seeing that and then as a as a westerner you're not really going to watch an arabic tv show and arabic Ar arabs are also very used to watching a lot of turkish and mexican serials that are dubbed in arabic right mm -hmm. so for the first time ever they're seeing real people having conversations in English and in Arabic. So the, Arabics, the Arabic people are related to it. The English people are interested in what Arab people are like. So I think that was the key to it. Like the first time this was ever done. One other thing that, you know, maybe some people don't know, um, you know, people that may have just seen you from the show is that you're also an entrepreneur. And that was obviously one of the reasons why I brought you on in the first place in yeah. part one was because not only were you a you know, famous DJ, but you've got so many hustles, you know, whether it's Curric Inc., whether it's, you know, uh, beats and cuts yeah. you know my favorite Great spot by the, way. by the way by the way my favorite spot yeah. I would never go anywhere else in Dubai <laughs> I appreciate shout out Jay he asked for a shout out yeah yeah dope. <laughs> you know he said to me uh, when I went to get a haircut he was like you know last time you mentioned me you're gonna mention me again I was like yeah of course <laughs> man. but literally amazing um, love the spot I but you know it. you you juggle so much man you're, you're traveling the world you're DJing you've got shops and businesses and how do you manage it all? It is difficult. I'm not going to lie. I've actually decided to take a step back from sort of doing, you know, uh, being so involved in the businesses as well, trying to put a team in place so that, you know, I can focus on what I want to do. But, you know, before I, I can do it, but just because I can do it, it's not, doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. So, you know, if I gave like 10% of my energy and time to every single business, so 10% here, 10% there, what's really left for what I want to do for my own music and my own careers, whatever, 50%. And that's not enough. You give, give something 50%, you're not going to get 100% back. So I really had to take a step back from, you know, all the businesses. I told my team, I said, listen, either this is going to run by itself with you guys or, you know, uh, we have to think of another option for it. So that's what I did. I kind of put a team into place, um, you know, to, to look after everything. It was a decision I made straight after finishing filming season two, which was, you know, like in April. And, you know, I traveled quite a bit. I want to start traveling again. And it's been great. You know, I um, get to see the world, get inspired, working on the music. And then the rest of the time that I have is really just time I have for like my family, you know, spending time with my kids and the family and whatnot. That's something I really respect, though. You know, since you've obviously, um, you know, done the, the whole show and everything and life has become even more hectic. I really respect the fact that your businesses are on autopilot and, you know, you can trust your employees. You can trust the, the people that are around you and not only, you know, is it just running, it's actually booming, like, you know, and, and it's a consistent service, whether you go to the, you know, Carrick Inc., whether you go to Beats and Cuts, um, you know, it, it, it runs like clockwork. Yeah. Um, and that's something that I really respect. H how hard was that to achieve? Hard. It takes time and it takes a lot of effort. I mean, I honestly believe that if you're ever going to get into a business, like, 
uh, the way I did all of those businesses, like Be Beats and Cuts was sort of like my first retail business that I got into. And I really didn't think about it much. You know, I was I was DJing. I was doing very well in like the entertainment world. So I just had money. I'm like, let me just put it in here slowly, slowly. But I think the right way to do it is really to just invest from the beginning, put a good team in place and just boom, start with a big bang. Uh, luckily, I was fortunate to be able to just keep investing into it and build to what it was. And, you know, we got a couple of great things that happened for Beats and Cuts, like, you know, some celebrities who came and cut their hair with us. We got a lot of good press for it. And we were ahead of the game, really. There wasn't any barbershops at that time doing like what we were doing. Like no one's doing fades and barbershops in Dubai. And it's actually our 10-year anniversary this year. No way, congratulations. Yeah, 10 years. So, um, you know, when, when we started, there was nothing like it. So, um, so you know, I was fortunate to be in the situation. And now, it's, like you said, it's doing well. It beats and cuts like on autopilot. Everyone asks me like, why don't you expand? And I feel like if you expand and like franchise, like it just changes everything for you. I feel like beats and cuts has a identity itself mm -hmm. and I, if i was to ever expand i think i would go to maybe like uh another emirate or like somewhere really far from where we are just so our customers can experience it and then for like a business like karak inc it was same thing you know i made a song about karak i love the drink so much so <laughs> then i'm like you know i made a song about it let's just open a shop and it was in box park where all my business are as well but, you know, it was, uh, I opened on January 1st, 2020, and the pandemic hit us, like, literally, it was like a soft opening. So we were going to, like, soft launch for three months and then uh, launch, and then the pandemic hit, and it was like, oh, man, I had to, like, really rethink this. And my sister, who's a chef, came on board. We redid the menu and, like, uh, started, like, working on it. And, you know, it's doing great, but it needs to do a lot better. And it needs to find people who know about the restaurant business, because the restaurant business is a whole different business. So that's exactly what I did with that as well. You know, I found experts who know what they're doing, got them involved and just, uh, you know, pushing the pushing it to the next level. We actually just started our second location, which is a delivery location um, in El Cruz area. So people can like order like all over. Because I think this is the era that we live in now. Like people ordering from the house, like most of our business from delivery services. So, uh, yeah, so that's Karak Inc. And then for Select, our talent agency, I have a guy who runs it. It's going very well with the DJs over there. As far as like nightlife as well, I took a step back from even, honestly, I took a step back from even doing weekly residency DJs because it just takes a lot of my time and energy and my whole team's energy and time. Price has gone up though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Um, so, yeah, I'm, you know, being a little selective, but again, thankfully, like, uh, it was the right time to do it because now I could be a little bit more selective. Like you said, I put my price up, do a little bit less. And uh, yeah, you know, I've got a couple of great gigs that I'm doing, but just not on a weekly level. So I have time to really concentrate on what I want to do. Do you still have that same passion for DJing? I love it. DJing is like my first love. Um, you know, I kind of did radio and DJing at the same time when I first started. Radio in my in my school, but I was also sort of... Just for context, how long have you been DJing for the audience? Oh, um, over 20 years. Yeah, I've been doing it for like most of my life. Like I know he looks 25. <laughs> yeah, at a very young age, like I was already in, I was just telling a story, I was telling a story to, uh, to somebody the other day, like I got these like, I couldn't even mix with it, but I got these disc mans, I would put them on each side and I bought a mixer and I was like in like very young and I was like putting song from here and then putting song from there, just like, uh, you know, blending music together or just crossfading over to each other. So that was really the start of it for, for me. And then my high school, I was also doing like my high school radio. Um, and yeah, I mean, a couple of years later, I just got into it doing it like as a hobby on the side. Then I realized, man, I'm really good at this and I'm getting paid pretty well. So it turned into my career, thankfully. I get paid to do what I love, which is amazing. Do you think you'd go down the route more of making music as well? Because like, I feel like you are, you are the DJ Khaled of Dubai almost, Thank where you. you can get artists together, you know, people respect you. You've always had relationships with, you know, American artists and UK artists. Is that something that you will dabble into more? I mean, I've tried to do it. I'm like sitting on like a handful of songs by like some of your favorite artists too, but releasing this music is always very difficult because of the paperwork that goes into it. So I'm actually taking a different direction. So, you know, the whole DJ Khaled idea was like exactly what I want to do. I'm like, I'm going to produce the music, get artists on it, but it turned out like it was so hard and the focus would go on someone else, right? Mm -hmm. So if I did a song with you, the song became a hit and you were the rapper, like you can perform the song everywhere, but I can't really perform it. So I'm going, like, I'm trying to create my own sound now as well. And I think there's a good bridge or a gap between sort of EDM and urban music right now anyways. Um, and, you know, I'm going to look for, like, artists who, like, sing well and just create great songs. Um, 
and let the songs be about me so that I can tour with those songs myself. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about part two a little bit. Mm. Um, Dubai Blink, you know, that's something that I'm sure a lot of people would be excited about. Um, it's coming soon. Yeah. Obviously, whatever you can talk about, let's go into a little bit more detail about part two. Yeah, I mean, we uh, finished film filming part two at the beginning of the year, um, and it's going to be released, I think, sometime end of October or beginning of November. I'm not sure about the date exactly. And yeah, I believe it's going to be even better than season one. Um, you know, everyone came back with a new attitude and, uh, you know, a bigger egos and... Um, you know, more experience on camera. So you feel it's a little bit more natural because I think people thought it's scripted because we're a little unnatural, but that's the first time we're sitting in front of a camera, like talking. So I think uh, you're going to be in for a treat. I think it's gonna, definitely going to be uh, a lot better. Um, there's a lot of great storylines in there. Um, you're going to see a different side of me for sure. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it too much, but like you know, this is, you're definitely going to see uh, a different bliss than season one for sure. No way, I'm looking forward to yeah. it. And you know, we we spoke about your personal life, and obviously, you know, making that decision of putting your your wife on camera, you know, yeah. mentioning your kids and stuff like that. Has that had any negative impacts after you've done it in hindsight? And are you happy with the decision that you made? That you know, because obviously, you know, with a reality show, you're gonna get opinions from so many different people, you know, yeah. on social media, positive, negative, everything in between. Yeah. Has that, you know, how has that affected yourself? Like actually when the cameras got off? Yeah, I mean, it's tough, you know, because like we're, we end up like, it becomes part of your life, right? Um, but I always say like, this is like, just be yourself. Like that's the most important thing. If you try to be somebody else, then that's where, you know, things get complicated. So on season two, we actually dive a little bit deeper into our relationship as well. So you're gonna see a lot more of that too. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's not easy. I mean, forget about just relationship, just like, you know, what happened after season one came out. Like if we spent some time on social media and it was driving us crazy. Cause you know, people take more time to go write negative uh, stuff about you than positive. It's like anything, like you don't go into a restaurant, eat the food and then write a positive review. Honestly. But if it was bad, you leave and write that negative review. So it's the same thing. So, you know, these keyboard warriors were out there, like, you know, writing stuff on Twitter was the worst. Like literally on the first week or two, we were on Twitter a lot and it was driving us crazy. So we, somebody told us like, just stay off Twitter. Like this, that's the worst place to be. Um, and we took the advice and, uh, you know, it got a little better, but you know, people were attacking us a, a lot, you know? My wife uh, for that, you know, the whole fighting scene. You know, Ibrahim were good friends also attacking him a lot. Um, I didn't get attacked that much. But I would get like the the whip of sort of what was going on because like, you know, the three of us together are, you know, we're like a unit on there. So, you know, I was, I was seeing a lot of that. And I was, it was upsetting to see like my wife and my friend upset. Um, and I'm sure the other cast got it too. It wasn't just us, but I, I, I somehow feel like, like we got hit the hardest uh, from it. But I always say like, you know, at the end of the day, people are talking. That's a good thing, right? You give them something to talk about. As long as they're spelling your name right, that's the most important thing. So it didn't affect you, like mental health, like, you know, uh, dealing with that level of fame overnight. I mean, the acceleration anyway. Yeah, I mean, I mean it definitely did affect me. Uh, and I can see how it could take a toll on you, on your mental health as well. Like, you know, um, and it's not so much just about the fame. It's um, it was actually stressful even like filming, like, you know, the schedule and what we have to do. And like I said, it's like, it's a world that's not yours and then you go into it and now suddenly this becomes our reality, right? So this is not this is not a movie where you start film for three months and then that's it. You forget about it. you're acting or playing mm. someone's part. You're you, you go in there and now you've got, you know, a whole bunch of people around you, like new friends, people who are not your friends, um, you know, things going on behind your back and you're trying to deal with all that and you, you it, it ends up becoming your reality. You start dreaming about it. You start thinking about it before you go to sleep. You think about it before you wake up. You start calling each other and like there's a lot going on. So that can really take its toll on you mentally. But I think really the key is to, to not let it get to you mentally. You know what I mean? Did you see people switch it up on you though? In what sense? Like maybe now that you're this superstar, maybe they're trying more or, you know, asking you for more favors or want you to be at this event more. And Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, for, for me, I'm fortunate because I've sort of been in this yeah. uh, industry before. It's so, not new, completely yeah, new to you. Yeah, so I understand it. But it's also key for me to like, uh, 
to kind of make that decision. It wasn't, and, and it really wasn't just about, you know, people or events or any of that. Like I said, I, I even took a break from sort of looking at my business, like looking after my businesses as well. I really said, hey, you know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot that's going to happen. I need some me time. Um, because contrary to what people may think, I'm actually a, a super introvert. Hmm. Like people think I'm extroverted as hell. Like, like there's no way. I'm like, you will not believe it. Like I really am. Like I would like, I'm super comfortable sitting at home. you like, you know, being alone, doing my own thing, watching TV. Uh, and that pe people are like, yeah, but you're out. You're, you know, you want to do a lot of things. I'm like, well, that's one thing people don't know about introverts is that you want to get invited to the party, but you don't want to go. Um, so yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot, especially as an introvert. Like I think it's, uh, it's a lot to handle. One thing I have to say though, um, like having met you before and, and obviously speaking to you in between and, you know, we, we obviously tried to get this date in a few times mm. and obviously our schedules didn't kind of uh, meet up, but you like, you're such a humble man, like honestly. And, and the fact that you went through all of that transition, a lot of people, man, it would, it would have gone to their head. I know you, you were famous already yeah. and obviously this just accelerated it, but you're still the same bliss, Thank man. you, man. I appreciate it. Look, my, my, my whole theory is that you can have it today and it can be gone tomorrow, you know? So even when we met, when we meet people outside and like, you know, they want to take pictures with us, sometimes our friends like, yo, oh, calm down. Like, I'm like, yo, it's fine. Because literally like you can have it today and it can be gone tomorrow. And uh, I think you got to be grateful uh, for everything you have right now. Um, uh, and, you know, be blessed that it's it's happening for you and just make the most of it because like literally it just could be a whole different story uh, the next day. So that's the attitude I have towards it. Like I really just practice gratefulness all the time um, in my affirmations, like in my meditation, like it's super important. And it's amazing. Like I said, I started off doing a job that I love and then I ended up like in a situation where the whole world is watching me. Like it's, it's just an amazing uh, place to be. And uh, like... Like you said, like it could you it could turn you in the wrong direction in terms of like you know getting to your head. But what good is that going to really do for you? You know, be arrogant and like you know act all superstar for what? Like we live in a social media era. Like people either mess with you or they don't. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are, unless you're like Drake or you know the Weekend or you know someone to that level. But even them, like I don't think. A lot of people say that when they meet them, they're actually surprised. Super. And I, I mean, you just think these people are like non-human people. When you meet them, like I met Drake a couple of times, like just another, he's another like human being, like just like you and me. It's just like, because we don't know them, we see them like that. But I can see like why people would think like things would get to someone's head because uh, if you reached out to someone or if you want to take a picture with someone, it's like, hey, not right now. And then you saw that person could just go on, oh my God, I met, you know, uh, this artist and they didn't want to take a picture or whatever, like just, you know, um, it could easily be twisted. So we live in an, er an era where it's very hard to do that. Um, I think for any, any person, you know, and your reputation, like word gets around now. Not, it's not like before. Mm. And people, if you have that reputation, people stop working with you and, you know, people stop messing with you and, and you're thinking short-sighted. Like I said, you have a you have a situation like a show right now. What if you don't have it in two years and you you were like super rude to this PR agency or this brand? Do you think they're gonna do anything with you? Of course not. On the You'd be lucky if they did something with you, <laughs> even if you were nice to them. Let alone uh, when you're not nice. I think because you've been um, hustling your whole life, like you know, nothing's changed for you in that sense. Like you, and and what I love is that you know more than anything, you deserved this because you know, you, you had invented yourself in so many ways. And sometimes the beautiful thing is I always say to people is that you don't always know what's around the corner. Like you, obviously once they approached you, you, you got involved, but before that, you didn't know that this, this was going to happen and that your life would be here today. And, yeah. you know, if you didn't do all of that work before, maybe that show would have never happened. So it's patience. It's, you know, timing. It's sometimes you got to just wait for the right moments, but you got to obviously do the work in, in the process as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I always uh, tell people about the theory of the Chinese bamboo tree. Um, the Chinese bamboo tree builds like in the soil for years. You don't see it. And then one day you'll see like a little sprout. And then in within like no time, it shoots up in the air. And I always say your career is like that. Like you never know what's going to happen next. And, you know, there's a, there's a saying that people like 90% uh, of people quit 
like right before they're about to make it or become successful. And it's just, it's sort of the same same theory. But you have to just put in the work, you know, not quit, be persistent and consistent with what you're doing and, you know, hope for the best. And I, th I really think if you have a passion for something and, you know, you're eager and, you know, you, you put it out there in the universe, like you're going to get it, like for sure. I know it's like a little deep talk in terms of like, you know, manifesting stuff, but that's my, that's, that's what I go by. And that's what I did, you know, whenever people ask me and that's, that's really what it is. Like I literally just manifested all of this. Like if I pull out my notes, I'm sure I, somewhere in my notes from years ago, you'll probably see a note that says reality, do reality. TV no story. way. Yeah. I actually tried to do something like a reality TV. I did a, I did a pilot for it in my own office, uh, you know, and then I started trying to do it like on YouTube because it was like easier. It was like a vlog style uh, thing. So I always like had in the back of my mind, I would love to do something of a reality TV show. And then like one day just boom, this shows up. <laughs> it's crazy. Let's talk about that a bit more like manifestation and, and, and obviously law of attraction and things like that, because there's a lot of people that don't believe in it you know they think it's wishy-washy it doesn't yeah. actually work and you know they never bother to try it but you know you obviously you've implemented that so if someone you know does have a dream and they do have a goal where where do they begin in, in that process yeah i mean f i would say first of all when you have a dream and goal like you need to write it down put a plan in place um and you know really plan the whole thing through from start to finish i mean don't just write, I want a Bentley, I want to fly first class, and, you know, I want a Rolex. Like, everybody wants that, right? So what? it's not about what you want. What are you going to give to get what you want as well? And put a plan together, like, you know, and also when it comes to, like, money. Like, people always say, oh, yeah, you know, I want, you know, I want to be rich. But what does rich mean? Like, rich could mean... A hundred thousand for one person, it could mean a million for another, and a billion could not be enough for, a th you know, a third person. So what is... Uh, what is it that you want? And don't be greedy, obviously, you know? Um, so I would say put all those down, like, and really remind yourself. Like, I have some, like, like mor morning affirmations stuck to the my mirror in my bathroom because, yeah, I know them, but I'm not going to remember to do it every day, every time I, you know, want to do it. Even on my phone, I, used, I put it on my phone for a while, it didn't work. Then I'm like, where's the one place I go to every day? You go wa wash your face, brush your teeth in the mirror, boom, look up and right there. So, and when I had like a vision board where I put a whole bunch of stuff on, I think we talked about it on the, on, the, on the first part, but I had a vision board with like a whole bunch of things that I wanted and I put it up on my wall. So I reminds my, remind me of like the things that I would get. And, and that's really the concept behind manifestation. It's a reminder. It's a daily thing. You know, I just did a, a, ni a nice meditation course. I had to do this meditation for every day for like, it was a 30 to 40 minute meditation every day for 30 days. And when I started, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. Like, every day give 30 40 minutes of meditation and then i gotta go to the gym for an hour and then i have to go to i'm like where's my day gonna go but i did it and on the other side of it it was like really magical what does that involve because obviously a lot of people say meditation but people sometimes people don't understand it is it literally like sitting there like hmm. <laughs> yeah i mean i listen to so i listen to an audio meditation so it's it's, it's it's called guided meditation so you find one that really works for you that you like um and in this guided meditation you go through different things like uh you know being grateful I mean, we forget the things that we need to be grateful for, like the air that we breathe, the fact that we're healthy, that you're able to walk and there's a roof over our head and there's water and there's electricity. Like those things are things to be grateful for. It's not like uh, you don't have to go too far thinking about what you're going to do. So we go through some of those things. Um, and then, you you know, forgiveness is one of the things, you know, you may have like... Um, people that you feel like you've done you wrong or you've done bad to them. Like forgiveness is both ways too. It's not about just people who've done uh, bad to you. Sometimes you forgive them uh, because you deserve it, not because they do. Even if they've done something to you, like for, imagine forgiving someone who's done something to you. Like it's a big thing. Um, so, you know, forgiveness, gratefulness. So you're listening to this audio and it's just guiding you throughout the whole time. Like at some point you just, your mind starts wandering off and then the more you do it, the more it's like training a muscle basically. So that's what I did. I did a, like a, I had a long, I have a long version of it. I have a short version of it. Um, and yeah, I did it daily for 30 days. And it was amazing, but I've done meditations before as well. Like, so, you know, before you go to sleep is a great time to meditate as well. Um, and there's meditation, there's breath work that you can do. Like we, I'm sure most people breathe wrong. Like just breathing can just change everything. Um, and then really just, I think the most important about 
thing about meditation is just to like, just say, pause, you know, pause your life for a second and just, you know, let, let me spend some time with myself because I'm giving everybody time. I'm giving the first, what's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Push it. Oh, look at your phone. Wrong. That's the worst yeah. thing. Yeah. Right? As you're probably doing that before you go to sleep as well, right? Yeah. This is, this is two of the worst things that you can do. Like literally, like that morning time when you wake up brand new, imagine like brains fresh, brand new, and you just, all you're going to do is, you don't know what's in your phone. You open Instagram and watch people's lives and suddenly like you're all over the place. Your day could change by just not doing that and just uh, doing like a, sitting in silence, just writing a couple of things. So whatever, you can meditate and like do it however you want. If meditation is not for you, then you can sit in silence, sit in, go sit on the beach, put on some like relaxing music. Um, prayer, I think prayer like Salat is a type of meditation as well. Of course. You know, um, and then, you know, part of this meditation that I do is also it has to do a lot with like, you know, uh, connecting with, you know, the higher source, like you know, whatever you believe in. So, so I think there's definitely like some kind of connection over there for sure. You know, what's, what sometimes I think about as well is that we're like, we're only maybe what, 20, 30 years into like having phones. Yeah. Maybe even less, right? Mm. And so our, our struggles are so different to all the generations before us. Like they couldn't wake up and look at a phone, right? Um, I think there was this quote uh, where it said, one of the presidents of the US, he had a device and you know, that device is now what we have. Like, you know, everyone has it. Um, whereas he used to control the whole of the US from this and he was the only man that had that. Yeah. And now like everything's at our fingertips and now yeah. we're moving into AI and you know, yeah. all this kind of stuff. So, you know, maybe meditation is more important than ever. And Salah obviously is a beautiful thing because, you know, it's consistent through the test of time. Yeah. And it's the way that we can kind of go back. But of course, you know, everyone yeah. has their own ways of and, you worship. Know, stopping to do it five times a day, you think about like, oh my God, five times a day. Like I, I read something about like when the prayers first got, you know, the, we're going to do the prayer. It was something like 30 times a day or something like that. And then, uh, and I believe... It was one of the prophets. I'm not sure of the entire story, but somebody told me this, that they said, okay, we'll do it yeah, five times a day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it went down and yeah. then it went down and then it went down. And we complain, but like, think about it. Like it's five times a day and it takes what? Two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Uh, and it breaks your day almost yeah. in segments as well. Yeah, and it's like, like it's, it's, it's not... It's, it's not just about, you know, like what we're supposed to do for our religion. Break in five times a day to pray. It's another, it's another form of meditation of gratefulness. And then think about like just washing your hand and washing your face like yeah, so five times benefits. a day. Yeah, do we do it five times a day? Probably not, right? <laughs> Unless, yeah. I mean, if you hold in the farts, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. You got to do it more. <laughs> so one thing I want to go back to in terms of the Bible is yeah. a scene that I know so many people were talking about, which yeah. was the six pack scene, <laughs> the famous six pack scene. And people were thinking, you know, what is this guy doing? He doesn't even need it. Especially that's what I was thinking. Like, yeah. what, what's this guy doing? So let's talk about that a little bit. Because I'm that, you know, that's how Dubai Bling started. Like it was one of the, I think it was the first episode. First, first scene for me, yeah. Um, so basically, I mean, the, the show, they knew that I was on like this health journey. I was in the gym working out. Like I was like, you know, trying to get fit and healthy quick. So they're like, hey, do you want to get a six pack? And I'm like, sure. So they set me up with his doctor and, uh, you know, we go in there and I don't know too much about like this whole uh, procedure. And then during the procedure, they're like, oh yeah, so, you know, they're gonna put you to sleep with anesthesia. And then, you know, they, I'm like, what? And I didn't realize it was like invasive surgery. So then I'm like, I'm not going to do invasive surgery to get a six pack. Um, but I, it's crazy because people hit me up, like every personal trainer in the world has hit me up. So, don't do it. And like, uh, you know, I can get you a six pack, like by just working out. And I got like all these like clinics and stuff that tell me to come do this and come do that. And, you know, without doing like invasive surgery, but yeah, it's funny. I get hit. Like that's the, one of the number one questions I get, did you do the surgery or not? And the answer is no, I did not <laughs> do the six pack surgery. <laughs> So Bliss, obviously you got, um, you know, season two coming up, but what else is going on in your life and what else are you looking forward to like over the next rest of the year? So I'm working on my music right now. I'm working on like an EP. So it's going to be like a small album, which I'm planning on releasing. Uh, and, and then going on tour, I'm like off to Europe uh, at the end of this month uh, for a couple of shows there. Then I'll be back in Dubai for a little while and I'm going to Asia to like tour Asia as well. So I'm taking this opportunity really to like, you know, take advantage of the situation and uh, 
uh, you know, while while the show is hot to go see all these places and like meet the people and perform. And then also I love traveling and doing content while I'm there as well. One thing that we spoke about in part one was um, your relationship with your kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that you loved about DJing was that, you know, you, you're up all night and then you can wake up and be with the kids and spend time with them during the day. How has that changed? And, you know, how has obviously raising the kids been for you over the past couple yeah. of years? I mean, it's it's still great. I don't wake up early if I'm DJing the night before now. Like, it's taking its toll on me. So, like, I'll ask my wife to kind of, like, sit in so I go sleep in the room. Plus, like, it's super important. Going back to, like, some of the things that you need to do to take care of yourself. Like, sleep is one of the most important things. I think drinking water, uh, sleep, and exercise is probably, like, the three of the most important things that you got to do. So, before I would do it, like, I'd go I, I I'd go to sleep. And then when they woke up early, I'd wake up. But now I'm like, I need to get my six to eight hours of sleep. Um, but while they were young, it was, it was cool that I was able to, to do that. You know, like their sleeping, their schedules were all over the place, but yeah, I mean, my son's turning five, my daughter's turning three. Um, uh, you know, we just traveled to Japan together with my wife. It was like a super, super cool experience to just be just the four of us, you know, had to like feed them and change them and bathe them and do all of that stuff just between us with no breaks and no help. So it's great. I mean, I love it. I, you know, it's the best feeling ever. How yeah. is Japan, by the way? Japan is... Like, is it up there, like, in terms of locations? I, I keep telling everyone this. If there's one place that you can travel to in your life, it's got to be Japan. Like, it really is an amazing place. It's funny because, obviously, you've grown up in Dubai. And mm. for most people, Dubai is that place. But obviously, you've lived here your whole life. So, for you, you kind of have to find different things and different experiences. Yeah. I mean, I think Dubai... Yeah, you're right. I mean, I don't know that feeling just because I was born and raised here. But yeah, maybe people think that about Dubai. I mean, Dubai is definitely a place you have to visit. I mean, all the amazing things over here that we have, like, I, I get it. Japan is not really, I mean, Dubai is made, like, it's, a, it's made for tourism, you know? It's perfect for tourism. Uh, Japan is not necessarily made for tourism. They're not here, they're not there waving their flag and trying to get tourists to come down. But when you go there and you see like how they're living and you know their what kind of uh, respect they have for things and people and all that, then you get to realize like what it is. And it's just it's a different experience. You just got to go there and see for yourself. They've thought everything through. Mm. I want to ask you quite a deep question now, mm. um, as we kind of you know wrap up. You've achieved so much success in your life. You know, even more so in the past you know, a year or so. So what does it mean now to you to be successful? We spoke about, you know, one person, it could be a hundred thousand, you know, sometimes it's not even financial, yeah. you know? So for you now, having achieved all of these things, what does success mean to you now? I mean, I just want to be able to do what I love and be great at it and, you know, connect with people. Like that's what success would mean for me. Um, you know, it's not so much about materialistic things. Um, it's more just about, you know, reaching reaching people, connecting with them, with my music, with my performance, the thing that I love doing, like DJing, you know, and performing in front of like crowds. Um, and, you know, I think like uh, producing more of my own music so that people can hear my stuff. Because, you know, just the, the few tracks that I do have when I meet people like, oh my God, I love your track. I, you know, and I'm like, I don't even put that much out. So I'm like, let me just do more. Like, let me create you know, more music. Let me be able to give people more. It's something I want to give give to people, um, you know, in terms of my performance, in terms of my music, in terms of, you know, me, my content on social media. Like, it's not, people forget, like, it's not really about me, me, me. It's really more about the person who's p pressed follow on your Instagram account, right? Um, so yeah, that's really, that's what success means to me. That's sort of also, uh, you know, what I'm focusing on and what my goals are. Uh, and I hope that people, you know, take it in well. You know, it always goes back to like my name. I like to, I like to feel blissful, like people to feel blissful, and you know, give give that kind of energy to everyone in whichever situation that I'm in. I feel like you're quite a minimalist. Like, even though you're always swaggy, <laughs> but you're not, you're not like overly like loud. You're not like a loud person. Like you're, like you're happy with what you have. You're content. Yeah, I mean, I think you go through different phases. Maybe if you met me like ten years ago. Um, you know, um, new money. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was like, yeah, I was young. You know, yeah. when you're young and like you're, you're little, you're you're a little out there. And I get like so, some people meet me and they're like, oh my god, you're like you're actually a nice guy. I'm like, really? Why? Like it's just like we didn't get that vibe like when we saw your pictures or videos or, um, 
and I get it. I mean, maybe I fed into that as well. You know, I was like, uh, I, I got, you know, I was very successful at a very young age and I was like, I was driving like expensive cars and buying the most expensive stuff, traveling and all that. And not as a show off thing, but you know, you get stuck in that, uh, mindset that that's that's what we want to do and it was social media era too like what are we doing on social media i'm eating this i'm driving there i'm flying here i'm doing this you know what i mean um so i think i i went through that phase for sure and if i can give people advice i would tell them you know don't do that but i always say that you just have to go through it and, and learn and, I, and I, I don't believe in like making mistakes anyways i feel like everything you do in life is part of the steps that you take to uh the journey of where you're supposed to get to. And it's a learning process. So I don't regret anything that I ever did. If I went back, I wouldn't change any of it except for work harder. Although people say I'm a workaholic. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I really do believe like, you know, all the things and all the steps that I've done, no matter if they were good or bad, like got me to where I am today. And that's why I'm sitting here and, you know, doing, doing this podcast, <laughs> talking about it on the podcast. And no pun intended, but what is your recipe to success? My recipe to success, um, I think success, I mean, like like we said earlier, I think success like money can mean anything for anyone. You know, someone's success could just be raising their family. Um, I feel like I said this on part one. Did I say this on part one? No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, one person's success can be just, you know, uh, raising their family. Another person's success could be like, you know, going all out. Uh, but I think to be successful, you just need to give it your all, you know, wholeheartedly figure out a plan, uh, put it in place and, and just be appreciative of every step rather than, you know, uh, think about, Oh, I want more. I want more. Everybody wants more. I want more all the time too. Uh, it's Cause a lot of the time it's the, it's the increments of the things that you do on a daily basis. It's yeah. not that one big win. It's, yeah. it's all the things leading up to that and the work that you do on a micro level, like on a daily basis. Yeah. I would say, here's a good quote. I don't know if I came up with this or I've heard it because I listened to a lot of stuff. I think success is more of a journey than a destination. I really do believe in that. You know, you think that success is okay. This is the end of, this is the finish line. And once I get there, it's success. And I, but I, I really now more than ever believe success is like the entire, uh, the entire journey. Because if you get to that point and that's success, what's next? Yeah. Yeah. And what motivates you to keep pushing, keep fighting for the next goal? I don't know. There's a voice in my head. Uh, that's one. Um, there is an eagerness to, you know, keep doing bigger, better, uh, things, now there's my family, obviously, you know, like uh, when you start thinking about wealth, it's not just about, you know, your own, you start thinking about generational wealth, about how, you know, they will live and their, you know, their generations will live. So yeah, that, that that's really it. I mean, it's a passion for, it's a passion. So I love what I'm doing, but also like definitely in the back of my mind and start thinking about like the family and, you know, making sure like, uh, you know, they're, they're taken care of. Not that they're going to get handouts for me because they're going to have to work hard for it, but you know, just that you secure your family's uh, future. What's been your biggest milestone in the past year that you were like, wow, like, I can't believe it? It's it's definitely this uh, concert I did at the Coca-Cola Arena. Like it was the, I organized it myself. It was the first time like I did a headline show and, you know, I just, no one was calling me to do a headline show. I'm like, let me just do it myself. So I, I went and got the biggest venue in town um and you know it was it was just me performing and it was scary because you know i came out of the dj booth i was about to come out after my intro played and i'm like either no one's gonna be here or it's like gonna be maybe my just my family and friends and when i came out and i saw all these faces it was like the most amazing feeling so just to be able to do something like that you know to achieve like your own uh headline show in your own city at like a venue like that i used to drive past all the time like that was really the moment for me i always think that you know for artists and djs like when you go out it must be some crazy high like adrenaline yeah it's unbelievable like can, un, unexplainable i think the, like the other the closest thing to it that i've ever experienced or witnessed in life is uh like skydiving maybe um that was like the closest feeling that i got to that Marwan, pleasure, bro. Honestly, thank you, always. man. I appreciate it for real. Thank you for inviting me back, and uh, it's always a good chat. 
Honestly. And for anyone that wants to follow you, nice and easy, you're out there. What's the best place for them to follow you on? Yeah, I mean, uh, djbliss.com, the website sends you to all the links. I'm, uh, I'm on Instagram as DJ Bliss Dubai, Twitter, TikTok. I'm trying to keep up with the social media is crazy. On Snapchat, and like now threads. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> like we needed another one. Um, and obviously part two, Dubai Bling coming out yeah. very, very soon. Yeah. Um, you said end of October, maybe start I think November. so, yeah. I think end of October, November. They haven't announced the dates yet, but I believe it will be around the same time that it was last year, which was uh, around that time. But we, yeah, we're getting close. <laughs> It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. I can't wait to watch it. Thank you, man. Pleasure, it. man. Thank, thank you. you, and thank bro. you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.